So first, let's start with the why. You know, I felt like every time I was hanging out with people that if there's ever a lull in conversation or in activity that people have a tendency to just quickly grab their phone and scroll through Instagram or Facebook or whatever uh, just because there's nothing to do or nothing to talk about. And what happens is that because you're filling that void of that lull, that there's always this activity going on and you might miss out on conversation or you might miss out on an activity or an event that's going on. So I was finding that, you know, every time there was this lull in conversation, I would grab my phone and I would start scrolling and it felt ingenuine to me and it felt like I wasn't really there with the other person or with the group of people and that my intention uh, wasn't fully there. And it always felt like, uh, like a disconnect when I would do that and it always feels like a disconnect when I'm like at a at dinner with people or hanging out with people and they pull their phone out and they start scrolling when I'm having a conversation with them. I know that for me like when I'm going through like a flow in conversation or flow of thought that I'll take breaks and if I am taking a quick break just to think about something before I continue something that sometimes people will pull their phone out and like look through something and it feels like well you know, you weren't paying attention to me in the first place. And I was doing the same thing. So it, it just felt like really ingenuine and, and that's something that I didn't want to do anymore. And so that was, that is one of the reasons why I decided to get rid of my social media on my phone. Another thing I started noticing is that my memory started to become a lot worse and I would become more forgetful about the things that I would see or the information I would take in. So like, for example, I only climbed up like two minutes or so, so long ago. If I had just seen like a funny meme or a picture or something on my Instagram feed or on Facebook, I would forget about it literally seconds later because I'm moving on to the next thing without really taking the time to digest the information, the image, whatever I just took in. Uh, I'm just like going past it really quickly. In the same vein, uh, like I said before, if I'm not there fully in a conversation or fully listening uh, with intention to the person in front of me and in those lulls I like pull out my phone, then I'm also more forgetful about what that person had said. And in general, I just feel like because you're just intaking so much information on Instagram or on social media that all that information is kind of like an information overload and you just become more forgetful because of all that information. You're not really processing what you took in. So because of that, I wanted to be more intentional in the things that I've I take in and I want to be more purposeful with the information that I'm taking in. Um, another thing is I feel like I'm a creative person on Instagram. I'm usually following like artistic pages, all different kinds of art, whether it's through video photography um, or drawing, graphic design, whatever. I just really enjoy taking in creative people's products. And what I was finding is that the more I was taking in of other people's works, the less motivated I was to do my own creative work. I find that they can be a little bit demotivating when you're seeing all these people doing these amazing things uh, because you're like, well, why would I wanna waste my time doing this thing? Or I feel like I don't wanna copy another person's work. And I feel like whenever I'm doing something that I'm not being original in the content that I'm creating and so, that's another reason why I felt like it was important for me to get rid of all that uh, creative overload that was happening because I just I just couldn't really focus on the things that, in the creative work that I wanted. Also, you're, you're like comparing yourself to others. Um, I think it's similar to like when you're, somebody lived their best life on Instagram and they only post the highlight reels. You're like, well, why isn't my life like that? When in reality, everybody's life is pretty much the same. They're just posting the exciting things that are happening in their life or, they are posing under certain light that makes their body look a little bit better. And 
seeing that constantly on your feed can really be demotivating. And I mean, it can be motivating to see those things and for you to want to do those things. But I feel like when you're constantly taking that information in, then you're more tied into what other people are doing as opposed to you going out and bettering yourself in creative ways or through fitness or, or however it may be. Seeing, I also find that you're more focused on the likes that you get and the content that'll produce those likes. So for me, I want to be able to do the creative work that I want to do and I want to be able to post the things that I want to post for fun because I like those things, not because it's going to get a lot of attention or a lot of likes. And I think a lot of people can get drawn up in that. And I certainly did. So for me to kind of distance myself from that like approval, whatever you want to call it, I had to get rid of Instagram, which is why I think Instagram should come up with a feature where you can get rid of how many likes you can see on somebody's picture. I mean, Instagram is great because you get to see all these different perspectives and it gives a lot of people different platforms to talk about the things that they've been through. But what I have found is that there's this growing number of like self-help gurus and people being motivational speakers and all that stuff on Instagram when the credentials for those things aren't really there. People love, like I said, showing their highlight reels or coming off as accomplished on their Instagrams. And I mean, that's how you get jobs through social media. When you only post or show certain things, that's how people perceive you as being that type of a person. So like if I was to only post pictures of me modeling, then people would perceive me as some sort of model when in reality, I'm just posting those pictures and that's the image that I want to portray. I mean, in that same vein, I, I feel like a lot of people, because they're manufacturing the success or accomplishments or the type of person that they are on social media, that a lot of people come off as really fake. When you see them on their stories or if you meet them in real life, then you're like, well, I thought that you were this type of person judging from your Instagram, but in reality, you know, you're really not motivating or you are you don't truly practice what you preach. I remember like years ago, I went on a date with this girl and she had said to me, she's like, you know, before I met you, I thought that you were gonna be a douchebag because based on what you post on Instagram, you just seem like you're really full of yourself. And that, that really took me aback because, well, first of all, I don't know how what I posted made me seem like that, but it made me more intentional about the way that I post because I don't want to seem like that because I'm not like that. So now let's touch on the how. So I've done this a couple of times over the past couple of years. The first time I did it, I got rid of Snapchat, Facebook, and Instagram. And that was over the course of like six months. I did that because all three of those platforms were taking time away from me or they were impacting me negatively in all the ways that I just talked about in the why. The second time I did this, I did it for a couple of months again, but I only got rid of Facebook and Instagram. And that's because Snapchat to me is, is a dead platform. I don't really use it anymore. And I was using Facebook and Instagram on my phone obsessively. Now this time around, I've only gotten rid of Instagram. Well, I've gotten rid of both Facebook and Instagram on my phone, but I have gotten rid of Instagram and I don't go on Instagram. Uh, but my Facebook is still there and that's because again like the evolution of how you use these different uh, Platforms so like I don't really use Facebook anymore other than to like see the events that are going on It doesn't it doesn't drain my creativity or it doesn't impact me in any of the negative ways that I talked about before But Instagram is still doing that so that's why I got rid of Instagram and so now this time around it'll be for an entire summer so I stopped using social media in May and I won't come back until the fall so in September so that's kind of like from the how on the outside of what it looks like but from a personal standpoint it is much more relieving and freeing to not be looking at your phone constantly to not have your head down and to not be intentional and be purposeful with the conversations and with activities that you're doing. I just feel like a better person when I'm able to remember what people have told me or remember the information that I've taken in. So you know, if you're planning to get rid of social media, I think step one is to figure out which one of those social medias really takes the time away from you being the best person that you could be. 
So like I said, right now it's Instagram and step one would be just to get rid of that. Two is to fill your downtime with things that you really want to do. Instead of scrolling through Instagram or Facebook or Snapchat after work or after school endless, endlessly for hours, try to find something that you really want to do and then force yourself to do those things. You know, summer just started. I want to be more present and intentional. So what I'm doing is, you know, every other weekend I'll be traveling around the state because Michigan's a beautiful state. There's a lot the state has to offer. And if I decide to go travel somewhere for a weekend, you know, I find that I'm not even on my phone that much because I'm really enjoying where I'm at. Whereas like sometimes when I travel places, I'll see people on their phone scrolling through Instagram looking at other things when they have these beautiful like monuments or natural wonders in front of them and I'm just not trying to be like that so that's really it for why I decided to quit social media and why I take large breaks I do think that social media is really helpful it has given me a platform to be able to connect with a lot of different people I've gotten I've gotten photography gigs, I've gotten model gigs, I've connected with people for business through social media, and that is amazing. But at the same time, social media has this huge negative impact on your personal life, um, at least for me it does. And so I think, just like with anything, things need to be taken in moderation. And so taking months at a time off of social media um, really helps me to kind of recalibrate who I am as a person and to focus on the things that I want to focus on. And what I find is that when I come back from these long breaks that I'm using it more so for the positives than the negatives. And that the negatives of how uh, social media affects me isn't as great as it was before I decided to take a break. So if you guys feel like there's any strategies or reasons for why you should quit social media or how you quit social media, um, please leave them down in the comments. I think it'd be really helpful for other people watching this video um, just to get a breath of knowledge and experiences from people uh, that have gone through the same thing. Thank you for listening. Until next time, I'll see you later.